Hi, this is Bill for SparkyChannel.com. Today I would like to show you how to install a Rheem Prestige outdoor condensing natural gas tankless water heater. This particular unit can heat up to 9 gallons per minute of hot water with an amazing 94% efficiency rating. This unit must be installed outdoors, not under any kind of roof such as a patio cover and it should be placed at least 4 feet from windows. It should be installed level and plumb and fastened to the wall securely both on the top and on the bottom of the unit. Underneath the unit there is a gas supply, a cold water supply, a hot water supply for the house, an electrical connection area, a remote control hookup area, and a condensation drain. First, we'll hook up the 3 quarter inch gas line. Here's a drawing that Ream includes with the unit and that can be found in the manual as well. They ask that a 3 quarter inch gas valve be installed first, right onto the unit. Then they ask that a union be installed, then a drip leg, which is to catch any debris that might be in the gas line, then an additional gas valve. First, I'll use the yellow Teflon tape, which is made for gas lines on the threads. Then, I'll install the 3 quarter inch gas valve and tighten it down. Then I'll use more Teflon tape, install a nipple, and then install the top part of the union. I'm using galvanized gas pipe because my local codes say that I have to for exterior gas lines. If your local codes say to use black pipe for exterior gas lines, please use them. Now I'll install another nipple and the bottom part of the union and tighten everything up. Now I'll tighten up the union itself. This is a Webstone lead-free tankless water heater service valve kit which I'll use so that the water inlet and outlet can be easily controlled while providing for easy system cleaning and flushing. I'll start with the cold water inlet by putting white Teflon tape on the 3 quarter inch threads. Then I'll screw on the cold water valve and tighten it onto the 3 quarter inch thread. Then I'll tighten down the middle of the valve. Now I'll prepare the 3 quarter inch copper cold water supply pipe and the appropriate fittings by sanding, fluxing and dry fitting. The valve has a built in 3 quarter inch slip fitting which I'll sand and flux. With all the pieces sanded, fluxed and dry fit tested, I'll assemble the pieces. Now with the valve open so that the hot air can escape. I'll solder the copper fittings and pieces together and clean off my work to remove any residual flux. Now I'll put the white Teflon tape onto the hot water outlet and tighten on the hot water valve. I'll tighten the valve to the unit, then I'll tighten the larger middle nut. Now I'll sand and flux the appropriate arrangement of 3 quarter inch copper fittings and pieces, then solder them all together and clean off any residual flux. The hot water valve is different from the cold water valve in that the pressure regulator screws into it. Put the Teflon tape onto the pressure regulator and screw it into the valve with the threads of the pressure regulator pointing down. Then add some 3 quarters pipe to the pressure regulator which you terminate about 6 inches from the ground. Here's what we have so far with the gas and water lines installed. Turn the water and gas on and test carefully for leaks. Next, take the rubber plug off of the electrical hookup area to reveal a half inch knockout. I'll use flexible liquid tight metallic conduit to run an electrical line to the unit. Take the cover off the unit to reveal an electrical hookup box. Remove one screw from the hookup box and remove its cover. Make sure that the electricity is off. I'll put my electrical connector through the knockout hole and tighten on the fastening ring. Then I'll bring the flexible liquid tight metallic conduit with the electrical wires to the unit. I'll attach the green ground wire to the green grounding screw, the white wire to the white wire and the red wire to the black wire. Then I'll replace the small cover plate and tighten the screw then attach the conduit nut. Now I'll install the remote control. 
Find a convenient place for the remote inside the house and attach the backing plate to the wall. The remote comes with 10 feet of 18 gauge bell wire. Drill a hole to the outside wall and feed the wire through it. Attach the two wires to the back of the remote control. The wires are not polarity sensitive. Then slide the remote cover onto the backing plate. I have a gang box on the outside wall which has a flexible liquid tight conduit going from the gang box to the water heater. Unscrew the screw that holds the remote cover on the heater and remove the cover. Run the wires through the cover and attach one of the wires to each of the terminals. The wires are not polarity sensitive. Screw the cover back on and tighten the conduit nut. Attach a 1 half inch interior dimension vinyl line to the condensate outlet and fasten it with a small clamp. My heater makes about 2 to 3 teaspoons of condensate water per day so I just run the vital line to the ground where it evaporates. Put insulation on both the hot and cold water lines. Now turn on the electricity, water and gas and test out the tankless water heater. Press the power button on the remote. Set the temperature to your desired setting. I prefer 116 degrees. The red flame symbol will come on when the water is heating. Now run some hot water to test it out. This unit is working great. I'll put links in my video description for the Rheem Outdoor Tankless Natural Gas Condensing Water Heaters that are similar to the one that I installed in the video. I'll put a link for the Rheem RTGH-84 DVLN. And that's an indoor tankless natural gas condensing water heater. And I'll put links for similar remodels that aren't condensing. And I'll put a link for my video, how a condensing tankless water heater works so that you can get the idea of the difference between a condensing tankless water heater and a standard tankless water heater. Also, I'll put links for similar Renai products such as the outdoor condensing 8.0 gallon per minute tankless natural gas water heater and I'll put links for the Rheem and the Watts service valve kits which make your installation much better and much easier to service down the line. Thanks! I hope this video was helpful.